So do you remember when I approached you about doing the film? Yep. When was that? That was... When the hell was that? I, I feel like that was in the mid- middle of winter or something. It was in the middle of winter. It was the winter... I guess it would have been, like... 2009. 2009, 2010. And um, the plan was to do the film in the coming spring, yep. summer. You said take off... Were you like... shocked? Oh, yeah. Like, um, it was great seeing you and Mike. And then you were like, oh, I want you to play a charge. I was like, oh... <laughs> oh, what was your like? What was your what was your first thought when we described the movie to you? Did it sound ridiculous? No, I liked the idea. I really did. I just didn't think I was capable. Really, that and was I, your and first. I, and I was really, really happy that you came to me. Um, I was like, wow, that y- you must think that I had something, uh, some talent or whatever. And then you said like, oh yeah, it'll just be mostly about you, and you know. Feature length film, and I started thinking, oh, oh God, you know, ninety minutes with Zach White. That that's always a. That's what we should have called the movie. Ninety minutes, 90 minutes with, with Zach. Zach. Not even Zach. I was trying my best. Um, but yeah, that was a. And then um, I basically, because there was no script yet, I just kind of said. This is the idea. I'm going to be writing a partial script. Did I say how much of it? I, I mentioned that we wanted to do a lot more, letting you, a lot more freedom to you guys. So I wasn't going to be writing like a big script. Mm-hmm. Did I mention that? You did. And that's why I thought that was kind of cool. And, um, in fact, um, yeah, I remembered um, thinking, you know, Castaway mm. with Tom Hanks, how like he, it's him for like 45 minutes. Yeah. I was like, that doesn't seem so hard. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let the camera okay. run and shit. Yeah, that's yeah, we'll just see what happens. <laughs> yeah, I know. But um, I felt I, I remember feeling like really bad because like I, I was gonna work on the script um, over the spring while I was at uh, while I was at school, and I was just uh, it was so hard to get in the mindset t- to write it. You know, just you know, with school going on, it was so hectic. So I ended up writing almost. Like, and I, I told you that I would have a script for you before we got back and all that, and I felt bad because I kept saying, well, it's not ready yet, yada, yada, yada. And then I finally got back into town, and I, I think I, we were, like, planning on shooting it early when I got back instead of August when we ended up doing it because I, I, I needed time to write more of a script. Right. I think, like, truth be told, like, I, was, I was apprehensive about it because I, I approached it a lot different then it would be anything else that I had written because in you know I was still visualizing the film and trying to um, imagine every facet of it, but I still wanted to leave room to surprise myself and to include the the contributions of the actors. So like I, it was weird because I I wasn't sure how I should change the way I thought about the film and how much I should prepare. So, um, but then I got back into town in April, and I wrote the script in April, May, and then what? Did did I meet with you? No, I met with you when I got back. Yeah. Right? I remember meeting with you and Mike, um, and Calvin the Silva was there, too. Yeah, I thought... And in the park, to chat about the character and the film a little bit, and to kind of tell you, so you could get a sense of what kind of movie you were going to be in. And I gave you just some preliminary ideas about what my character had already been doing. So did you think about it over the spring? I did. Yeah? What were the kinds of things that you would think about? It was really more of this process of... um, I'm not really not that person, but I have to be this person. So what do I have to do? Do I have to start taking steroids and stuff like that? No, that's not necessary. (laughs) Probably. In the hindsight, it would have been great. But uh, (laughs) I just started... Paying attention, you know, rather than just like shutting those people off and like just like, oh, I'm so above that. I just, uh, yeah. we're just dudes mm-hmm. we're trying to get by. We're all people. Yeah. Different lifestyle. <laughs> I didn't go clubbing or anything though, and that that's actually one of the questions I was most afraid of in those Q and A's after the screenings because people were like, so what sort of process did you go through? What sort of character development did you? Do? <laughs> I followed some folks around campus. Um, took the train a lot. Well, I was obviously taking the train, but paying more attention to people on the train. 
particularly after the uh, Thursday sort of UFC campus bar night. Oh, okay. Just listening, really. Just looking at what people are doing. You know, oh, it's boisterous and whatever, but... It, and uh, it was something really almost like appealing. It's like, oh, yeah. You know, I wish I could go through life with half their, you know, not. I want to say, like, they're being inconsiderate. Whereas I'm, like, so, Carefree. like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm like, oh, my God, if I did that, people would look at me and that'd be bad. You know, whereas I could do that and then have a great time about it and just carry on with my life and not care about what other people yeah. think. And that's such a big part of the film too. Is like, yeah, that's that's the that's what people think about when you see these kinds of uh, individuals out and about on the train and stuff like that. Is they do seem carefree, but like what we were, you know, obviously trying to suggest is that everybody has the same kind of mentality that you do. Is that I'm so nervous about what I say and what I do, and I'm worried that everybody's watching me. Yeah. And everybody's aware of that gaze. And even though people seem carefree. It's not necessarily indicative of the fact that they are, they feel free. So, yeah. So in the long run, to whoever would ask that in the screen, I would just say, whatever I saw there, I would want to, I want to emulate. I don't want to, like, you know, satirize or become, like that, uh, uh, my new haircut, my new you know? Haircut oh, that was hilarious. No, yeah. I thought, that is exactly what I don't want to do. Yeah. Because that would be a disservice to your vision for the film. Right? Yeah. And I, I showed that to you, and I, like, I, I watched episodes of Jersey Shore just to, like, get a feel for all the stereotypes that exist about those people, because we're, you know, part of it is, like, counteracting those, acknowledging that those exist, and then working against them in some way. So I felt like it was important to be familiar with them, which is why I wanted you guys to watch that. But then, you know, we're not making that kind of comment about those, that culture or anything like that. The right. movies he gave me too, like once and everything, and just like how natural that was. Yeah, it sounded so nice. And um, when you're saying a lot of the shots would just be open, you know, just do what you want to do. I thought, oh, that'll be so liberating, you know, how exciting. It was terrifying because, like, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. And like I said, after that first sh um, shoot with uh, Cody, and then working with all the charges and stuff, that whole day was so important to me because it's just like, look at this. We can just. It's not, it wasn't staged. It wasn't like theater. It wasn't like, oh, we've rehearsed this for so long now. Let's get out there and do it. It was just like, it was alive. I felt alive. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like that freedom is, is initially daunting, isn't yeah. it? Like, because, yeah, like. It, One of the, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Go right ahead. No, I was, I don't think I was going to say anything any remotely intelligent. <laughs> One of the hardest, one of them, um. One of the hardest scenes was just on board. I take the I spend the day at home rather than going out with the Josh boys. Mm. And you just have me doing random bits around the house. That was hard. It was like there, open concept room. I'm sure and I was thinking like, oh I'm sure like Robin Williams would come in here and just like me <laughs> do whatever the hell I wanted, you know. But I had no idea what to do. And it was just like that was that was nerve wracking. Yeah. So I had a nice, you know, your guide in Zach, here's the script, you know, do this, do this when we talked about it before we even shoot. And then there's this is my living room. Go ahead. Go nuts. Yeah. I remember that, that day because we the first shot we did was the master where you come down the stairs and you just kind of enter the room and I was just like, just go wherever you want and do what you want to do and well, I'll cut it when I want to cut it. Yeah. And yeah, that's like, that's so much freedom because you could have done any number of things. I just wanted to lie on the floor and I thought, no, no, no. Who would do that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not, that's not film worthy. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, but it's, um, it's, it's freaky. It to is. open yourself up to that. Um, what were we talking about before that? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, like we had our we had our meeting in the in, in the field and stuff like that, and they gave you the films to watch, mm -hmm. and um, and then you know I was continuing to write the script, and then we had to, you know, develop all the the props and the costume, and that's not something I've ever had to do a lot of is costuming, but I really had to like spend a lot of time going, okay, how many costume pieces do we need? Etc. Um, where am I going to be able to get them? How much is it going to cost? Because you know we only have so much money for the movie, and yeah, uh, that was. And then we, you know, we would go out, we went out shopping for the clothes. Mm -hmm. You remember that? That was a good time. We almost didn't buy you your pants that you wear throughout the film because you thought they were too tight. But um, 
Was it nerve wracking how long I was taking to do the script? Be honest, because I was nervous about it. Work started up in May, mid May. I was already thinking about um, transferring into the English department and everything like that. I had other things on my plate. Honestly, I just it'll be here when it's here. Yeah, because I imagined you like like Mozart, you know, with like the red scarf and everything when you're just like flying through, but. I wasn't concerned. Yeah? That's good. Um, and what was your reaction when you actually got the script? I was nervous. Yeah? Yeah. Why? Um, that bus stop scene. Oh, that freaked you out? Yeah. I was like, okay, no, that's cool. The rest of it seemed great. And then the ending was neat to me. I was like, oh, man, am I going to be like some big hero, you know, swooping there? No, you guys are assholes. <laughs> No, there was... It just ended. And I thought... Yeah. Did how, you feel like... How, the, how amazing was that? Yeah. yeah. Did you feel like there was enough in the script for you to, to build on? Like, because like it, it's a sparse script, there's not a lot written down. It was a sparse script. And that's some of the reason why I was so nervous on that first day of shooting. I thought, am I supposed to come out here with, like, you know, the character? You know. But really, it was just a morning with... The dad, we've been talking about tobacco. So, by the end of that, it's like, okay, I'll just stick to whatever's there. And then just, that's why it was so great um, that you reminded me. Because we shot out of order. Mm -hmm. You know, like, remember in the scene before, you, you were doing this, this, and this. And it's like, oh, that's right. So I should really be bringing that into this. And then it's like, the more we went, oh, the whole train sequence now. And then, now I've met Stephanie. And it just kept on building. And it was... It was wonderful. Hard. Because yeah. it's like, oh, well, that hasn't happened yet. So I shouldn't be acting like it's going to happen. Yeah. I feel like that's a big part of like a director's job. Because an actor has to live within the moment of that scene. Yeah. They really should only be thinking about moment to moment. Is to remind an actor, you know, this has kind of happened in the, in the scenes before to your character. And this should inform how you're going to play the scene. Um, and don't forget, this hasn't happened yet. So you shouldn't know of that. You shouldn't think of that at all. You yeah. shouldn't expect any of that. And that's that's hard because, you as an actor, you're you're already aware of all the things that will happen in the film, but you have to selectively pick what kind of knowledge, your character knows at any one point, and I feel like directing is, really partially that reminding you where we're at in the film, how this piece fits, because obviously I have to be very mindful of that, especially when you're shooting is out of order as we were. Yeah. In drama, um, just some of the acting that we did there, they were all just little excerpts from plays, right? And then you had to go and develop everything for that one little moment. And with the film, I really got the experience of bringing everything I've done with me. So I got a complete uh, experience, rather than, now, in this play that you've never read before, and it's due tomorrow, so you better, you know, <laughs> this has happened, this has happened, but don't do that. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, goodness. And that's that's why I don't believe in auditions. Like, I, I, I think they're like a phony baloney thing. Because, you know, you give an actor like a set of sides from a certain scene in a, the film that you're doing or like a different show that they have to read and prepare. And like, how can you expect a proper performance without giving the, the context to the rest of the film? Without, you know, describing it immensely? Like, how do you expect somebody to build a character without every piece of information that they, they need to have. I, I find that very strange. And I, I feel like, um, you know, if you do that to an like, you can do that to an actor when you're shooting, is, like, not give them enough information, not let them know, like, um, you know, and without, without the context of the rest of the film and the rest of the performance, you know, individual moments really have very little meaning, I feel like. Anyway, that's just me. And then um, we had the script and we started doing pre-production. Did it start to get pretty real when I was buying costumes? And... Yeah. Yeah. I felt like I was on a roller coaster at that point. Yeah. Like, was there a moment of, it? like, urgency? Because, uh, like, the, the basically this, this... We didn't have a schedule to shoot. I just said, we're starting shooting on this day and we're, we're just going to see what we can do we went week to week we're just gonna week. wing it we're just gonna <laughs> just show up and fucking roll the camera yeah exactly 
but no, like, cause like it was hard to plan really far in advance. So it was kind of like setting out on a, an adventure that really had no completion date or anything like that. Like I knew when we had to finish by, but it was, it was uh, nerve wracking. It was like, in my mind, it came about really, really fast. Like the, the transition from writing a script, which is like, you know, it's, it's not real. You're, it's all in your mind. And then starting to shoot, like even like collecting props and stuff like that. It doesn't hit me until there's actors there. There's like crew members waiting for your direction and like people expect you to know everything. It's like, it's, it's terrifying. Especially, you know, that you're going to create, you know, 90 minutes of narrative and it's, I don't know, like that, that, that first, like the night before I start to shoot is like always just like a nightmare for me. Like I'm so stressed out because it's not just, oh, there could be things go wrong tomorrow. It could be that things wrong the next day, the next day, and the next day. Because, like, you're not setting out to do something for one day. You're setting out to do it for, like, a month. So I have extra tape. Batteries charged. Yeah. And not even, not only that, but just, like, like fearful that... Like, you really have to build something out of nothing. It's, like, it's not like... It's not like any... I don't know, any other art form. Like, you know, because... You just start to juxtapose images together to give somebody something. It's not like painting where you have materials. Film is totally ephemeral. Like, film doesn't exist as a real thing. It exists as, like, as, like, as something you see, but you can't hold it, you can't touch it. It's, it's, so, it's such a strange feeling to be on the precipice of creating something that you can't touch and can't hold and you can't mold in your hands it's like a it's like it's, it really feels like you're like fighting some unseen force it's a really strange feeling and i was really nervous about about doing this i i was it, oddly enough i was never nervous about i was so confident in you i don't oh like, really i was i was ne never for a second concerned that you wouldn't be able to do it not for a moment. That's good. You had other things to stress about. Yeah, no, I had lots of other things to be worried about, but I was never worried about you. And I, you know, it's weird to think because I didn't, I didn't, I've never really known you that well, but I've seen you do your thing, and I, I like to think that I'm reasonably observant. And I was just like, you know, Zach's a thinker. And if I tell him to go think about something, then to prepare this sort of thing for the character. Like, we talked about uh, body language shifts between, you know, being out with your friends and then being in the house by yourself. And then we talked about um, things that you could do to express anxiety without revealing it to your friends. How the audience would be able to see it, but they wouldn't. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. And I would just tell you to think about it. And I knew that you would. Always knew that you would come up with something. Shooting with Mike when we're on the couch. I mean, you're telling me less. You know, think more, move less. And then you get that nice wide shot. And there's Mike reading the yearbook. And then there's Tyler just slumped. Yeah. That was great because it's like, ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Now, now we're on the same page. And yeah. I just felt, felt free. It was like, good. I've got Tyler with his friends. And I've got Tyler. Yeah. Did you feel more comfortable doing less? Did you, like, or was it... Sometimes I want to... Um, I'm trying to think of a good example. But I, I just feel like uh, some days I wanted to do more. Then I thought, no. That would be contrary to, like, the last 45 minutes of film we just been shooting. Yeah. So why, why would I do that now? To, to give myself, like, a, a moment of, like, ah... Oh, I could probably do this. That'd be great. Uh, no, Tyler would not do that. Oh, yeah. That's right. Then. It's, yeah, it's funny. It's like, as, as much as like acting is, is a hugely creative thing, at times like part of it is like uh, putting your, your creativity and your boundless energy into a box because, you know, a person 
is not everything that you're capable of doing. You know, you have to confine what you would do and say and think into this kind of like a narrow uh, path, which is funny. And and like I, I I find often or I think that actors they're it, it's it's nervous with a film because you know, on stage or a lot of other ways, like, you're, they're directing the audience's eye. You're trying to get them to look at you and at a certain time or whatever. But the film does that for you. I do that for you. I, like, if if you find that a particular moment in a scene is significant, you might want to emphasize that moment. But you don't emphasize it. I emphasize it. Yeah. By putting the camera closer or moving the camera to you at a certain moment and things like that. And you don't know what's happening. Which I think is so strange. Exactly. And, so you have to you have to give a lot of you give up a lot of your creative freedom when you in act in front of an film. audience yeah. when it's just happening, mm -hmm. and you know the scene is important. Yeah. And something comes to you. And you're like, I could probably do that. Yeah. Let's rehearse it first. But then if I do it, maybe it'll work. Yeah. And this, if I do it, well, it doesn't matter. You're floating over Jason right now because Jason's just laughing his ass off about a crooked penis. You know. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, oh, that's right. Let's yeah. just go right back down into what, what what am I supposed to be doing? Yeah, and that's that's one of the reasons. Like, I, it's I think uh, working with actors is 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 it's nervous for me because I want them to trust me because I know all the things that I'm going to do to make every moment work. But they really have no idea what's going on, and I don't want to like talk to them about. Well, I'm going to do a close up here, and like nobody has anybody interested in finding out all about that. So. One of the things that's important to me is that, like, you know that I'm going to do the right thing. So when I always talk to, and I think I talked to you at the beginning, I was like, well, you just have to trust me. You have to believe that I'm going to do the right thing. Which is why it's cool to work with friends and not strangers who don't think that you're capable. Trust and belief. Yeah, and, like, the bus stop scene and everything, when it finally came to it, I said, it's a great scene. I'll just yeah. believe. <laughs> and you were terrified. Well, so what was what was like shooting like? Because obviously it was exhausting because you were working at the same time. But did you like take it home? Or were you thinking about, oh, well that went well or that didn't go well? Or, man, Brendan was such a jerk today. All I had was how I felt about my performance. Um, everything at like the school, looking underneath and pretending to find like old friends' initials and stuff like that. Mm. All that stuff that when they would come to me, I thought that's good, you know. And that riding his bike and everything, this is good. Tonight was a good night. I don't know what you thought, because you were just busy directing an entire film. <laughs> um, but on nights, I would feel like I could have done more. But you seemed happy, so I thought good. Did you ever? Did you want more reassurance? Did you want me to tell you? Would Would that have helped? Do you think? No. Whatever you did was great, because um, it made me. Didn't make me rest on my laurels at all. It was just like, he's not saying anything. That's good, you know, because he seems, you, you were so focused on everything. And it's like, okay, well, he's not telling me to stop yet, so I'll just keep going, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. Zach, you might want to tone it down, you know, with the with Mike on the couch, you know. Tone it down, tone it down. You know, remember, you're constantly racing. Things are always happening, but not, not physically, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. And then I go and do it. Was there a scene that you loved doing particularly? Anything with the charges. Yeah? Was so good. The boys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jason's whole... Oh, John too. Oh, they even shot. Oh, those good. They're so good. Yeah. Every single one of them is so good. But when Jason's going like, yeah, my dad lost a job. <gasps> oh, no. Yeah, now I have to pay my own credit card bills. Fuck it. You're kidding me. And I just <laughs> love being able to just like, oh... <laughs> react the way exactly you would want to in that moment yeah oh yeah. so nice yeah i loved anything with that but um the train the train sequences were really neat and i just like how we had to rush back in there like gorilla <laughs> get a quick you know oh buy a ticket from the booth oh someone's coming you know yeah. we so did that fun. twice yeah. yeah yeah so good that was good was there any scene that was like arduous and then you were like oh this is terrible i hate this let it stop. Honestly, um, the first maybe half hour, 45 minutes of that uh, home shoot with uh, Stephanie. 
It's just been a long day. It was, I yeah. probably had, like, heat stroke or something like that. But stopping and then thinking about it and then doing it again. And then the lighting's off. And then, oh, yeah. no. Yeah, it was. It's just, like, the technical things that, like, fuck with an actor's head. Because you're, like, you're not in control of that. And it's holding you up. And it's It wasn't something I thought about. Yeah. And if I was ever drifting in and out of frame, not something I thought about. Good. Or if going to the shadows or anything. I only thought about it after we stopped, and it's like, oh, maybe I single-handedly destroyed that take. What was it like, because um, we, we finished the film at the end of August, well, we didn't finish, like, we had the one scene left to do. Um, what was it like having to come back, well, basically, like, three months later, to do that last scene? It just got right back into it. No problem. Um, dusted off the, the earring. <laughs> uh, I, I still have that little pink plastic bag with all the stuff in it. Oh, yeah. The necklace. I just dumped that stuff out, looked at it, and thought, oh, yeah. Glanced through the script, script again, realized where we were at. And I was so excited. And, um, that CD you gave me with the, uh... Oh, the music that, yeah. that eventually ends up in the film, yeah. That, that last track that we used. Oh, yeah, the speeches. Yeah. Painted paper figures, yeah. I would have that in my car, and I'd be driving, and I'd be thinking of all the cool different ways and how Brendan's going to, like, you know, make me look like a freaking badass. I'll spin around and, like, punch John in the face and then, you know, save the day or, or like, backhand Stephanie or something like that. <laughs> 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 oh, we should have shot alternate ending. Oh, my God. And my mind was just racing. I was like, this is it. This is, this is the ending. How are we going to do it? Well, I already knew how it ended. Yeah. But getting to that, and I really wanted to leak how I wanted it to end. I wanted to be like, maybe if I like subtly wink at Stephanie at the end of the movie, and then we'll go blank and be like, oh, he's actually going to, you know, do that. Oh, that's so great. But no, none of that. It was just like, show up, yeah, do the job. It was that last scene, like, that shooting that last scene, because that was pretty chaotic. That was. We had like four people in there. <laughs> Myself yeah, we, included. We showed up at the Liberty Lounge, and I was expecting like 30, 40 extras, and we had four. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, what a nightmare. Bless and, and then the lighting was all wrong, like, I, and they had huge windows, and it was supposed and to be nighttime. And there was snow and there outside? Was snow, and it was, oh, my God. I was, I was about to have a panic attack. I was very close. <laughs> And then John was late. John was late. Sean had a toque. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sean had like a whole head of hair <laughs> under his ski toque. And Sean was like, I, I had to get Sean out of bed. I showed up to pick Sean up at his house and he was still in bed asleep. I, I like, I think back and I, and that's it, but I just like, how the fuck did I really manage to like make that scene even remotely come close to working? And it's amazing. Like, people love that scene. And it's a, it's a perfect capper. But you think about it, and I, I remember doing that, and I remember just being like, wow, well, this, the movie is ruined because it's going to end on this ridiculous note and it's going to be so stupid. Everybody's going to laugh at me. I don't know. And I was like, I remember actually being there and thinking about what other ways can I end this movie without this scene? I was thinking about that at the moment. I was like, oh, man, this isn't going to work. And I knew, like, well, we're going to do it anyway, obviously. We're already here, etc. I'm going to do my best. But I was already thinking ahead, going, this is going to be a disaster. I was already thinking that. So I was like, when can I edit? When? What can I do? It was, it was, it was a terrible feeling. And then, like, you know, like, nobody seemed to... Because it, it was hard to get, you know, everybody back in the groove... Because, you know, when we had been doing the film, it was, like, on everybody's mind, you know, we were doing it, you know, it was that time. But then I had to drag everybody back to it. And there was no, like, sense of urgency. Like, we were, because we would be running the scene, and, like, you know, the guys would be having a good time, like, improvising and stuff like that. But, like, we were on a deadline. Oh, and that's right. Finish, and, like, John and Sean and Jason would just keep going, and I'd be like, you guys gotta stop. I mean, how many times was I started yelling doing that scene? I don't remember. I definitely like I like I had to I had to shout to get them to be quiet because they were you know Mike was there too. Oh yeah. <laughs> and you know Mike likes to 
But it was it was a nightmare. Like it, it, everything that was like potentially would have made that difficult made that difficult. Uh, you worked miracles on, mm. on that last scene. It, yeah. looks, it looks amazing. It does. It's like it totally worked. And then I took the footage back to Vancouver, and you basically heard nothing from me. Was that nerve wracking? You went. You were in the bunker. Yeah, I was in the bunker editing. And then, and then you called me and tell me that you're also trying to do like three or four different films for school. Yeah. In addition to editing this film for our screenings. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, I'm trying to write a little like little English essay. Right <laughs> it's going about my business. <laughs> Look yeah. at home, you know. <laughs> it was weird, like, being so detached from the creative people who had made the film with me. Because, like, I was in Vancouver, and you guys were in Calgary, and I really, like, didn't, because I didn't, didn't have a lot of time to contact you. I had to pay to, you know, call and oh, stuff like that. Yeah. And, uh, like, so I really had, like, no, it was really, like, being in my own isolar world, thinking about editing this movie. And... I like I really got lost in my own head with it because you know, there would be times I'd be like, "Oh man, this movie is so fucking nuts! I don't, this, I can't edit this. It's so scrappy. It's you know, two cameras and improv." And I was like, "I can't do this! I can't do this!" And then there were times I was like, "Wow, I'm a genius. <laughs> this movie is amazing. I'm gonna put people on the floor with this." And then, you know, thinking like the next moment, I was like, "This doesn't work. This sucks." I was like, and I was nervous because like. I, could, I had nobody to talk to about it who had done it and knew what the vision for the movie was. Who To, like, reassure me and just go, it'll be fine, just keep... Just it. you and your demons? <laughs> yeah, just me, like, wrestling. And, you know, it was, it, was, it was rough. It was really rough. And, uh... Yeah. And then... Now here we are, recording special features for the DVD. What did you learn from making this movie? What, what do you take away? That's an excellent question. Um, trust your director. You have a role to play, just play the role. I mean, I always felt so bad worrying or like seeing you trip on cables and seeing all the, the sound and that you know, that you knew that was coming. That's that's your, that's your domain. I'll just let you handle that. I'll work on my, yeah, my end here and give you what you need, what you're looking for, because I'm gonna be carrying a 90 minute film here. Mm. And it's nerve wracking for like an actor in an independent film because you want to like help those other elements because you see how we struggle, right? But, you know, you really have to do your own thing. I have to be selfish sometimes. Yeah, you do. And, like, so when, you know, when I always, like, bug actors, I say, like, well, you can't carry things. Actors don't carry things. And I don't say it just because, like, oh, I got pride. I don't want... But it's really because, like, you know, that's that's our thing. And I have to worry about all that. And all you have to worry about is just performing naturally and being prepared I also appreciate that, yes, we're friends, and yes, we were working with other kids our age, you know, and, but you strive to maintain a huge level of professionality in everything you did, and that's why when I showed up, it was like, this is going to be my second job, um, and just like my other job, just come there and get, get it done, and that was actually really, really helpful, Yeah. treating it like a job. Not just, you know, that's that's almost sounds negative, but really that's how I got through it. I, there are things that are expected of me, and I'm going to do them, regardless of whether I get paid or fed or insulted or, you know, yeah. whatever. But you have, like, responsibilities. <laughs> exactly. Right? Yeah. And later on when we were just doing, just shooting up in your room here, it was, this is going to be a film one day, and people are going to pay to see it. I need to step up. Yeah. So thank you for giving me that opportunity. Hey, man, uh, you deserved it, and you did. You took with it and run with it. Uh, that's terrible grammar, but you know what I mean. And yeah, I, I, 
I, I'm, I'm, I'm so, I mean, it's hard to know how you're going to feel about, you know, the work that you've done down the road, but I'm so proud of this movie right now, and I'm so proud of how you did and how you carry the movie, even though I, I, I bear little, you know, uh, I have little, like, ownership of that. It's just, it's so cool that that's in something that we made together, and, uh. Yeah, and it was it was an amazing. It was an amazing experience. Like it, it it was like at times just awful, and I was exhausted, and I was frustrated all the time, and. Like, you know, because when you when you're making making a film, even though it's like really personal to me, and even though I I felt all those things that you feel at the time, because you're crafting something, like you're building something, you don't. I don't feel a lot when I'm making the movie. Surely when I'm writing, when I'm editing, yeah. But when we're shooting, it's business. Business, business, business. Because there's so much you have to do. And there's so much you have to be mindful of. And if you're anxious about, you know, the content here or whatever, um, you can't. So it's... It was, it was awesome that even though, like, that's the the kind of the mode you shift in when you are making the movie afterwards you feel so much for it and you can see that the film carries with it so much feeling and I think that's like one of the cool things that I take away from it because even though I would think about the film when we were making it and I would go well I'm it doesn't seem you know moment to moment to be like a really emotional movie when I watch it now it's like it does. And everybody I speak to says, yeah, it has like a, there's a, a feeling behind it that it's, that's pushing. And that's great. And it, it gives me confidence that the next time I do a film that I'll be able to do the same thing. Because Generation Y was never very emotional. And I'm glad that this is. I liked what he said about building a craft and that's one of the obstacles I had to go overcome, even just on the first day of shooting, I thought my character had to be built. But the movie hasn't even started yet. So thank you for allowing me to evolve. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That was just uh, such a great experience. And then working with Mike and the Chachas and Stephanie, it always a pleasure. And it's so nice to meet some other folks who are just as enthusiastic as you were. Yeah through their evenings out the window to come help us out. Yeah. It was so cool because it was such like a communal sacrifice because everybody shows up and gives their time. Yeah. And everybody has like work going on, you know, that's that's stressing them out. And they come and they just do such a great job. And even though nobody, we don't spend a lot of time talking about why the film is important or meaningful or anything like that like I don't I don't give like speeches to people about it but people just like have the sense that it is and that's I think that's pretty cool and I think it's like there's a reason why films aren't made for $1,300 and there's a reason why people don't do other jobs while they're making films and I think it's really cool that we all did it and we did it together so I'm proud of everybody well, we're proud of you. Thank you. And I speak for everybody. You speak for everybody? Well... When they were elected at the last union meeting? Yeah. Oh, don't tell me you guys have unionized. We do. Oh, no. You are screwed. I'm in big trouble. <laughs> you have to go all Scott Walker on your ass and... You know, bring it. Well, uh, fake injuries when we have to pay, like, workers' compensation. No, no, you need to destroy your right to collectively bargain. <laughs> Um, I don't know, are there any, like, last special memories we should communicate about making that movie? Making Chach? The making of Chach. Uh, my roommates. I was working, but I guess they had, uh, gone out to the ship and anchor and saw right in the center, right in the center, a little case, our movie poster, so... Yeah. That was neat to hear that people out there actually see our poster just like any other movie. And it's like, they have no idea what went into it. Yeah. They have no idea. But we are so happy that they're, they're in the, uh, 
theater watching it right now, so. Yeah. 